Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we've been looking at this week, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Now, we ask ourselves that a lot of times, (laughs) uh, or maybe others when they don't make wise decisions. What were you thinking? Uh, I've asked myself that when I've made unwise decisions. Greg, what were you thinking? But we've been looking at Jesus and the team that he chose, uh, the disciples, those 12 guys that he did life with that were his ministry, uh, a little under two years, history says. And Jesus only did ministry for three years, those last two years with those guys. And yet, the way he chose that team, uh, been a great series, done films, a documentary called The Chosen. If you haven't seen it, really encourage you to check that out. But we've been looking at, you know, Jesus, what were you thinking when you chose this team of guys that definitely would not be what we would have chosen today? If you missed Monday or Tuesday's programs, I hope you'll really go listen, listen to those podcasts of the programs. Only 14 minutes long at our website, hopeitsheretoday.org. But we started looking at the first person that Jesus that said, hey, I want to be on this team. And Jesus said, hey, come follow me. And that was Andrew. Okay, Andrew. And we were looking yesterday about how Andrew invited his brother Peter uh, to come meet Jesus. Andrew met Jesus first and knew he was the Messiah and said, hey, I want you to come meet him, Peter. And we talked about who is it that you're going to bring to Jesus to meet Jesus in 2024 really challenged you on that and we all know at least one person and I shared some ways to be intentional about that then yesterday we talked about like Jesus how can we glorify God through a challenging season of life and we're looking at John chapter 12 verses 20 through 28 where Philip came to Andrew and said hey I've met some people that want to meet Jesus and Andrew took him to him and Jesus shares with them about his upcoming death and even though obviously he knows it's going to be extremely painful, but he just simply says that, you know what, should uh, I ask God to save me from this hour? No, it's for this very reason that I came. Father, may I glorify your name. And I shared at the end of yesterday's program about just a woman of incredible faith, Joni Erickson Tata, who has been paralyzed uh, from the neck down. She's a quadriplegic since a accident when she was 17 years old just trying to dive in for a summer swim and yet i shared at the end of the program that on top of dealing with that over 40 years now okay actually over 50 that now she has cancer and i just found that out by listening to uh, a radio program called family talk by dr james dobson i assume that she was just going to talk about her powerful story of faith and how she's learned to paint with her teeth and how she's written over 40 books with voice recognition software so she can't use her hands. And yet, um, no, it was about her diagnosis of cancer. And to be honest with you, when I first heard this, I got a little angry. I'm like, come on, God, are you serious? How in the world does this woman have to suffer cancer with all that she's already been through? And it really hurt my heart, friends. And I want to say to you that, you know, on this side of heaven, we have trials and tribulations. And and so, unfortunately, I didn't get to hear the rest of the program. So I had to, I arrived at my destination. So I looked up on Joni's website and read about her dealing with cancer and what she had shared that day on that radio program. And here's what she wrote. And uh, this was three years ago. She said, many of you are asking for an update on my battle against stage three cancer. Although it was around 10 years ago, I was first diagnosed with cancer, that ugly disease, it did return a few years ago. And it meant more surgery and an aggressive regimen of radiation. And yes, I'm still taking chemotherapy drugs once a month to eradicate any and all the nasty little renegade cancer cells that may try to stir up mischief in my body. The monthly shots that I take are painful and the side effects are not pleasant. The drug exacerbates my pain levels, but hey, I'm not complaining. My last blood test and PET scan looked pretty good. So I'm not about to, you know, complain to my oncologist, get me off this drug. No, I'm trusting that God is keeping me alive for his kingdom work. 
And if you're battling cancer, God's doing the same for you. If you're living with cancer, friend, you've got a mission field. You've got doctors and nurses. You've got technicians, receptionists. You're getting to know the people who draw blood, who give you IVs, the ones sitting in the waiting room with you. Yeah, you're on a war against cancer, but you know what? God has expanded your field of witness in this war to win hearts for the kingdom of Christ. I thought, friends, that is so powerful that she can do that, a quadriplegic now dealing with cancer, but saying, no, it gives me an opportunity more to be able to witness for God's kingdom. And she went on to talk about that, you know, uh, that suffering, you know, cancer is awful. And she said, you know, it's just that reminder that suffering crushes our illusions that this earth can keep its promises. It can't really satisfy us. Cancer is a way of reminding us that the bottom line for any Christian is heaven. So let's work toward it. Let's bring as many people to heaven as we possibly can on this side of earth. And friends, that leads me back to my first point on Monday's program, and we talked about some on Tuesday, that who are you bringing to Jesus in 2024? Friends, we know, we even living here in the Bible Belt, that so many people don't know Jesus. And want to encourage you to just really ask God, who is it that he wants you to be like Andrew and be like Joni Erickson Tata and introduce people to Jesus? Even through our trials and tribulations, even through our illnesses, even through all those challenges, as hard as it may be, if Joni Erickson Tata can do it, friends, I believe we can do it. Not saying it's not easy, not saying it doesn't hurt, not saying that there's things in my life, nothing to the extreme that what Joni Erickson Todd has been through, but through heartaches and disappointments and divorce and bankruptcy that I haven't shared my testimony sometimes with tears in my eyes because of knowing how painful that season was. But I'm thankful that God never wastes a hurt and that your deepest wound and hurt uh, will be a ministry that God will give you if you will allow him to, friends. I want to look at one more time as we wrap up this week, looking at what were you thinking as we're going to be looking at the next uh, few weeks on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, today we're doing a third program on it. Just so many good nuggets from Andrew's life, one of the 12 guys that Jesus chose to be on his team. We're looking at John chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. And if you've been a follower of Jesus very long, you probably know this story about the one where Jesus fed the 5,000 and uh, I'm going to share from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Then another one of his disciples, Andrew, who we've been focusing on this week, Simon Peter's brother, we talked about that, that quite often he was mentioned in the Bible, not just as Andrew, but as Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Andrew said, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus went on to say in verse 10 of John, in chapter 6 of John, Jesus said, have the people sit down. There is plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. Among 5,000 men were there, well, friends, that's not counting all the women and children, so there were easily probably 10,000 people there. Jesus then took the loaves, those five barley loaves of bread, those small loaves of bread and two fish. He gave thanks, and they distributed those who were seated as much as they wanted. When they all had enough to eat, Jesus said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Friends, that brings us to my final point this week in these three programs. I've just had three 
One, who are you bringing to Jesus in 2024? Two, how can we bring glory to God even in our trials and tribulations or help others with areas where we've suffered in our life and bring glory to God and help people to know Jesus? And number three, my third and final question or statement for you this week, I want to remind you that little is much when God is in it. Oh, that's a great song. If you don't know little is much when God is in it, I encourage you to look it up. Go to Spotify. Go to YouTube. Uh, put in little as much when God is in it. I actually love the Gaither Vocal Band's version of it personally. But what a powerful song. Little is much when God is in it. You know, those five little barley loaves, and actually, you know, as I did some research in it, those were a type of bread that people, when they were poor, they ate, ate that type of loaf. And they were small. So they they weren't big loaves, okay? Don't make any mistake about that, because this little boy, his mom had sent it with him, so he she knew they wouldn't be big loaves. If she sent a little boy with them. But like Andrew... When we bring to God whatever we have, he will bless it and do what only he can. You know, friends, maybe this is a year where, you know, financially, you know, if you're honest, you really haven't been faithful in giving to God. The Bible talks about giving 10%. And I would encourage you, if you have a local church, to give 10% of whatever income that God's entrusted you with. I think what a generous God. For every $10 that uh, I entrusted with, God only asked for one. And then... If you've been blessed by ministries like Hope is Here, above and beyond that, then share with those. And so many of you are so good to do that. And I so thank you and so appreciate that's allow us to start our uh, seventh year of doing ministry. I'm just thinking, wow, God, you're so good and you're so generous. But I believe that's because that I've tried to be generous with my own personal financial resources, giving above 10% of what God's entrusted me with into church and other ministries and uh, you know saying you can't outgive God but maybe this is the year you really start to trust God with your financial resources and maybe like Greg there's no way I can do 10% we'll start with 1% okay start somewhere secondly uh, I want to challenge you you know Jesus before they tried to distribute that five little loaves of bread and those two fish you know what Jesus gave thanks he looked up to God and thanked him for that and asked him to bless it and I want to encourage you, whenever you're eating out this year, I don't care whether you're with a group or by yourself, to say a prayer over your food and give God thanks. You know, I can't tell how many times over the years when I've done that, often by myself or with somebody, and we pray over the meal, that how many times it's been numerous over my life, people come and say, hey, thanks for praying. Uh, you know what, I, that really encouraged me. I need to do that, and I want to do that. Or, hey, I'm a Christian, that encouraged me to see somebody else, and uh, I want to pray for my food too. So we're, we're only you know, a couple weeks into this new year. Be thanking God each time. And if you're not out in public, at home, just be thankful. And last but not least, friends, God asked them to take up leftovers. And, I mean, God knew what he was doing through Jesus, obviously. And, you know, friends, God always shows up, but sometimes he shows off. And this is a case where he showed off with little is much when God is in it. He said, you know, not only am I going to feed these probably almost 10,000 people, we're also going to have leftovers. And friends, that is so powerful to see. When I, it made me reflect on times where God's done that in my life. And he wants to do that in your life too. So just remember today that little is much when God is in it. We're out of time. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.